mayors that are elected, things like that in cities that are basically Russian. And the Russians, Lavrov, their foreign minister, said last Wednesday, he said, if you keep doing this, we're going to move our military in to protect Russian citizens and, and, and Russian ethnics. The response of the Ukrainians are to attack multiple cities with attack helicopters, tanks, you name it, including every day they report scores of civilians being shot in the street. They pull checkpoints over. If you got a Russian last name, boom, they shoot you in the head. That'd be like if Mexico took over Texas. And Mexico has a claim to Texas going back before uh, you know, the uh, purchase. And then if, if anybody who was a Texan and wasn't a Mexican was being shot. I mean, it's the equivalent of that. That's what's happening to the Russians. The Russians are like, we've been here for hundreds of years. They're like, we don't care. Boom, in the head. And our media is calling them freedom fighters, and their president, their, their prime minister in Ukraine, is calling the Russians terrorists. They're saying, Russians out of Ukraine. That's like half the people in Ukraine are saying, get out. We're going to come back and break this down. This is huge. Again, folks, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday worldwide broadcast. I am your host, Alex Jones, and we're talking about the Russia situation. I mean, obviously, it's over in Eastern Europe. The average person is like, hey, what do I have to worry? There's basketball on television or different sporting events. What you need to know is, is that back in 2008, on 888 during the Olympics, the West launched an attack through NATO on Russian-held areas since the 50s, South Ossetia and Abkhazia and blew up Russian military bases. And the Russians responded by bringing tanks and armor in and uh, mobile ICBMs. And I've talked a lot about this. It's just to understand what's happening currently, you've got to know what's going on now. So in my book, when you attack Russia, that's, that's a criminal act. It's not America doing it. It's the globalists controlling our country. Now, they have overthrown the Ukrainian elected government, calling them freedom fighters on our news. The new nationalistic government that's in charge is very anti-Russian, and I don't blame the Ukrainians, a large portion of them, not liking the country of Russia. Russia's occupied them off and on scores of times and did a lot of horrible things under Lenin and Stalin to them, killed more than 10 million Ukrainian kulaks or Christians. But the globalist and sociologists are accentuating all these differences and all this animus, just like they have racial divide here in the U.S. that the Democrats stir up, MSNBC, engaging in divide and conquer. So it's the same story here yet again. And so there's no discussion in the media, the controlled press in the U.S. or England or even Europe, about how we got here. The West spent $5 billion, well, the State Department did alone, others spent a lot more money too, uh, NGOs and George Soros groups separate from that spend hundreds of millions conservatively to overthrow the government violently, call them freedom fighters. And then Russians in Russian cities where they're 75, 85 or more percent Russian, they don't want to have their mayors and people that are elected beat up and overthrown and their TV stations taken over. So their police have not been standing down and letting the Ukrainian military come in. And so now the Ukrainian military is invading all these different cities. And I mean, smoke on the horizon, burning buildings, dead bodies, checkpoints. And the Russians are starting to mass troops on the border, saying we will protect Russian interests if this continues. And we've now gotten to the point where Fox News in England, Sky Television is what it's called, but some of Rupert Murdoch, is, is talking about imminent Russian invasion. And, and, and so is the news here in the U.S. And they're talking about partitioning the country in two parts. Now, here's the good news in all of this. There is a low probability chance that this is a stage deal set up months ago at Davos. And this has happened before. Just like Hitler took one part of Poland and Stalin took the other. And they acted like they were fighting each other. But really, before World War II, it was a deal to divide the country. That's later been admitted. This could be a deal like that where Russia just takes one part of the country up to the river and, and, and up, to, um, up to Kiev, just like that with East Germany at the end of uh, World War II. That's what empires do. They'll act like they're fighting, but actually just divide things. I don't see that. This looks like this is real. The West has been trying to overthrow the Russian government 
And again, people are like, well, should you like Putin? It's not our business. He's not attacking us. Putin isn't lobbying to take my guns, George Soros is. George Soros is lobbying to overthrow Russia. So that's what all of this comes down to. So I want to hear what you have to say coming up in the next segment. If you live in Ukraine, you live in Poland, where U.S. troops are massing with NATO troops last week. If you live in Russia, you'll have to dial your regular, you know, computer phone number and then call our toll-free number. That is the weekend phone number. It's 877-789-2539, 877-789-2539. And I do this every few weeks on this topic specifically. I want to hear from active duty military or military retired or contractors, people that have been in Ukraine. Do you disagree with my take on this? I'd like to hear from you. 800 Two five nine nine two three one is the weekday number. That number doesn't work on the Sunday show. We produce this all out of house here in Austin, Texas. So it's eight seven 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 eight nine Alex, and just dial your country code and all that, and call us then at that number. I'd like to hear from you eight seven 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 eight nine Alex, or you can call us international five one two six four six seventeen seventy six five one two six four six seventeen seventy six. And I want to hear from folks in Russia, people in Eastern Europe. But, but this affects everybody worldwide. But I want to hear from people that are informed. Another big question is, how does the West think the interests that run the West, they're going to get away with this? This is a big deal. Because our government and the NATO and EU government, when, 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 when they couldn't economically and politically conquer Ukraine and suck it dry, they voted to not join. And so their elected government was overthrown with, quote, U.S. money. This is not U.S. money. This is the U.S. taxpayer money being used to do this by the globalists. But nevertheless, to start this whole process with Russia and a new Cold War, when Russia isn't communist anymore, they're certainly autocratic and, and, and attacking Russia like this politically and economically and now militarily and trying to cut off their gas to Europe, their main funding mechanism, will only make them more authoritarian. So again, the, the globalist interest playing all the sides off against each other, they stand to gain out of crisis. Russia suffers, the U.S. suffers, Ukraine suffers. I want Ukraine for Ukrainians. They should be kicking the Russian government out and the Western governments out. And there was a movement to do that. Let's go to this uh, Sky Television piece where they talk about war with Russia and an imminent Russian invasion. That's a quote. Imminent Russian invasion. If NATO counters, it could turn into World War III. Here it is. There is only one reason for these Russian aircraft to be violating Ukrainian airspace, and that's to conduct reconnaissance missions. There is an added urgency to Ukraine's Prime Minister's trip to drum up support for sanctions against Russia in Europe. We urge Russia to pull back its security forces, not to provoke and not to support Russian lead terrorists that are located and deployed in eastern and southern Ukraine. Eight foreign OSCE military observers and five Ukrainian officers have been captured by pro-Russian separatists. They stand accused of spying. They have no relation to any OSCE mission. As we found maps on them containing information about the location of our checkpoints, we get the impression that they are officers carrying out a certain spying mission. The OSCE has sent negotiators to secure their release from detention somewhere here in Slovyansk, and the Russians have promised to help. This is the latest relatively small local incident that has had international reverberations in the Ukrainian crisis. But the stakes are high, nothing less than the division of Ukraine, with the East renamed New Russia, on this map posted by the former separatist leader. We'll come back and talk about what they're calling the imminent invasion of, by Russia of Ukraine. Stay with us.
Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune system.